Mark Victor Hansen is one of the most successful authors in the world. What did he do to get there? He had to overcome enormous failure to create that success. The reason why you want to listen to Mark Victor Hansen is because you probably have forgotten something that can change you again. You have to reinvent yourself often in different phases of our life. And Mark allows us to remember those key essentials to allow us to grow to the next level. Everyone say, I'm ready. Everyone say, my personality is majestically radiant. Everyone? Yeah. This guy is just like me. He loves life. He loves succeeding. Mark Victor Wow. Everyone say, wow! And I call home and Elizabeth at this juncture is six. She's now eight, this is two years ago. And she says, happy home with the Hansons. Elizabeth speaking. I said, honey, it's daddy. I just want to tell you I love you. She said, daddy, I'm telling you I love you in your ear, but I know it's melting your heart. <laughs> now, I tell you that because... Some of you say, well, I can't sell, and I can't present, and I can't share, and I can't recruit, and I don't know how to do all this enriched stuff. All you got to do is be a little kid, because the little kids are the best salespeople in the world. If you ever tell a little kid no, what does it mean? Nothing! <laughs> they are rejection-proof. Everyone say, I'm rejection-proof. Everyone, I'm? He's a bit of a renaissance. He brings ancient knowledge and juxtaposes it with the future in ways that are so compelling that make you feel like he understands you in a very authentic, personal way, and at the same time, allows you to think of new possibilities. When God needs something, he has a lot of it happen all at once. Everyone say all at once. Because there are going to be 10,000 tries, and only a few of us are going to suck it in, tough it out, and be persistent, consistent, and insistent. Leadership is persistent. I mean, you got to keep going when it doesn't look like you're going to win. I'm going to show you my own example of that in a second. But that got us out of the depression, right? First we had oil, then we had an automobile, and then two guys that own a bicycle shop named Orville and Wilbur decide to fly 14 feet. And you go, well, that would make an airline industry? In spiritual language, especially in, in the Far East, we call it opening your third eye. Everyone go to your forehead right here with two fingers and the other hand and say, just, I'm popping open my third eye. Everyone? <laughs> Guys like him popped open his third eye and went forward and decided what he could do and how far he could go. And When you hear Mark speak, do you know one hour on the platform, this man can turn the direction of a company. And he's been doing it from China to Chicago for many, many years. I was hired not long ago to talk at Keller Williams. Arguably the fastest growing real estate company in America. And I've been training in real estate for a lot of years. Back when Century 21 started the first real estate franchise and on to Remax and I can go through all the names. I'm being introduced. And Gary Keller himself was introducing me and says, I cannot believe it. I heard you talk 12 years ago and you gave me the dream. You said I could own my own real estate company. I said, I never said that. I don't even remember ever meeting you. And we had 12,000 people in front of us. He said, no, I heard what you said. You reflected back to me who I really was, who I could be. And I want you to know it's not only affected me, but then he brings his wife on stage and his kids on stage. And he said, every one of these people is making a lot of money. This is the best of the best. All because I heard what you said looked in the mirror, saw myself as I could be, rather than the slouching, lazy guy that I was. I hope you can do that for everyone. The beauty of Mark Victor Hansen is he makes people realize that they are the epicenter of opportunity. He makes them understand that they are the ones that can drive their future. Not too many people can empower that with people. Mark can do that, and I, I love that he did that, and he did it magically. Match the frequency, turn on.
on the dial to the right station. You see, I'm dialing in my perfect life. And he's got 100 million women out of poverty. Now, that's leadership, because the question is, is what is one person able to do, right? I mean, even spiritual language, and I understand we've got lots of different relationships in here with spirit, but, you know, the master teacher said, greater is he or she that is in you than he or she that is in the world. There's greatness in you, and you are here to release it, and I'm here to give permission. Everyone say, I now got permission. Everyone, I now got permission. We have an outsider come in, and I hold up the mirror and say, here's what I've discovered about your company. Here's what I've tailored. I've put together just this for just you, whether it's 45 minutes or three hours or three days, and I give it to you, and I hope that it sources and serves you and takes you to the next level. Understand that the whole game is concept. What's the whole game, everyone? Concept. Okay, so it says, next page, and number five. It says an MIT is an idea or a concept which you must be in harmony. You gotta be in harmony. There's a lot of ways to make money, but I want you to do the ones that are ethical, honest, moral, and uplift total humanity. See, we said figure out what you want. That's the most critical question. Number two, write it down. Number three, you gotta see it before you can have it. Visualize it. And number four, you've got to have a dream team, which we'll teach tomorrow, where two come together to get the power of 11. The question is, do I and can I and will I customize my speech? And the answer is 100% yes. If I am given permission, I want to talk to the chairman, the president, the head of marketing, the head of sales. And sometimes we even ask all the people in the top 50 people in the company to answer these questions to either one of my, myself or one of my staff. What's working? What's not working? And what would make your company 10% better? Another good technique that Mark uses is engagement with the audience. We all know that passive isn't as good as active, and he keeps the audience active. One of my quotes is, the size of your thinking determines the size of your result. You know, they can go in Never Never Land. But I say, now touch yourself and say, the size of my thinking determines the size of my result. And to make sure we don't lose them, I say, take your neighbor's shoulder and shake him and say, the size of your thinking determines the size of your result. Now they don't get to go away and think about whatever they had to think about because they've just gone, hey, wait a second. I was thinking I was going to make 100000 If he's telling the truth, I could think one more zero and make a million, which is what I teach people. And I have them literally do one zero. Now they never forget it because they go home and their spouse says, what did you learn? The guy says, all I got to do is have one zero. And what he told me was that when his kid was in the hospital dying, he had to go do a seminar with the richest salesman in the world, Ben Feldman. And Feldman said, how much are you making? I said, $100,000 a year. This is 40 years ago. And he said, if your kid's life depended on it, could you up at one zero and make a million? And that so inspired me and stretched me that I started making a million a year. And that's what I teach my audiences. That's kinesthetic, one zero. The message that Mark Victor Hansen shares is universal. It can inspire the young, the old, it's cross-cultural. It's really about building the self to build a better world. We have a story about a, a, a four-year-old who's a thumb sucker. Dad, they're about to go to church. Dad says, boy, you keep sucking your thumb. Here's what's gonna happen. Your stomach's gonna expand, then it's gonna explode. Sits in a pew next to the woman who's nine months pregnant. <laughs> All the way through, he is looking at her. After the final amen, he walks up to her and says, I know what you've been doing. 